Well, welcome again. Another day, another devotion, or, or so they say. Uh, we are on page 75 of our Green Prayer Books on the Thursday evening service as we're going through the evening services this week. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Well, as is the custom with these evening services, we have a time of reflection and confession and reminding ourselves of the goodness of God's gospel in light of the truth of ourselves and the truth of God. Uh, so we're going to take a moment uh, to pause, uh, to reflect on the ways that we have failed our good Lord uh, in the day that, it's, that has been. Uh, if you're watching this in the evening, uh, yesterday, if you're watching this in the morning, uh, and, and thinking through how we need his forgiveness. Take a moment to pause and then we're going to pray the prayer of confession together on page 44. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Have mercy on us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you and live a new life to your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I think about my own sin, I need God's assurance that he has me safe in his hands. And so we do read this in 1 John 2. If anyone sins, we do have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. What wonderful words to be reminded of as we trust in God's gospel of grace and come before him unworthy, but trusting in his grace. Well, the psalm appointed for today is Psalm 110, and it's a very uh, well-known psalm. Let's uh, read this. I'll, I'll, I'll read it for us. Of David, a psalm. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle, arrayed in holy splendor. Your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge the nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. He will drink from a brook along the way, and so he will lift his head high. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for all your gifts to us. Grant us to accept both pain and joy in faith and hope, and never to fail in love to you and to our fellow men. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We're going to read uh, Hebrews 13, verse 7, just one verse again, as we're heading our way through 
Hebrews 13, and it goes like this. Hebrews 13, verse 7. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. This is the word of the Lord. Well, one thing that is helpful for us to do to respond to God in his word is to, again, speak his words uh, for ourselves and to him. Uh, I think we should read Philippians 2, 6 to 11 uh, from the prayer book, the canticle, The Song of Christ's Glory, uh, together. So I'll do that slowly and the words will come up on the screen. Jesus Christ was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Well, as I said, we are looking at the next verse of Hebrews 13, verse 7. Uh, and from the outset, uh, I find this verse a really hard verse to expound for you. Uh, for a few reasons. Firstly, as an ordained clergyman, it, it sounds self-interested. Remember your leaders. Uh, but secondly, I'm aware of my own limitations, my own failings, so much that sometimes I doubt whether I am a good example to even be imitated at all. But when I do read this verse, I do think about my own Christian leaders. I think about Will. Uh, when I was 18, uh, I met Will, who was an older, wiser Christian. Uh, he was the dad of one of my schoolmates. Uh, now, I'd grown up in a Christian family, learned about Jesus from a young age, but I was very immature in my own faith. Uh, my actions didn't quite line up with what I believed about Jesus. When I met Will, he offered to meet up with me to read the Bible and to pray together. And it was through this relationship that I think I truly understood the gospel for the first time. And slowly but surely, God caused me to start living as a Christian rather than believing one thing and then living a different way. Now, I mention Will because he was a leader to me. He wasn't ordained. As far as I'm aware, he hasn't had theological training but he did two things in this passage. Uh, see, at the time, Will was the 2IC of a, a really big financial company in the city. Um, it was a, definitely a high-demand job. And yet, in spite of the demand of his job and his family and all of the balls that he was juggling at the time, he had time for me, an immature, uh, know-it-all 18-year-old. He shared the gospel with me even though to some that might seem like an unproductive use of time. But as well as speaking God's word, he also lived it out. In spite of his really high-paying job, uh, he was generous and hospitable. He invited me into his home many, many times, which wasn't a grandiose home, as you might expect a, a high-flying exec to own, just a modest four-bedroom family home. He gave away most of his income. Will spoke the gospel to me, and he lived out his faith in a godly way. And Hebrews 13.7 says that, as I am a recipient of this kind of godly and generous leadership, I'm encouraged to imitate Will's faith and conduct. 
Well, I wonder who the wills are in your own life and how you might be encouraged to imitate them in faith and conduct. Now, it's not that our leaders are perfect examples. No, they're flawed and sinful, just like you and me. Uh, We reminded ourselves of that as we prayed a confession earlier. But as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, we are to imitate our Christian leaders as they imitate Christ. And as you imitate, it's worth considering also who you are leading yourself. Who is watching and listening to you? How are you speaking the gospel to others? How are you living a life worthy of being copied, imitated, so that we all, God's people, Jesus' followers, might be growing in faith and godliness together. Well, that's a real challenge, isn't it? To think about how we are imitating our Christian leaders and how we are living lives worthy of imitating ourselves. Well, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the good examples of those who have gone before us. Those who have shared the gospel with us, those who have brought us into their own lives. We thank you for those who keep leading us to trust and follow you to this day. Would you please give us the strength to imitate them as they imitate Christ? And please help us to be people who lead others towards you, who share the gospel in what we say and how we live it out by what we do. Please be growing us as your people together and we pray this for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, you raised Jesus our Lord from death and gave him glory. And through him you called your church into being, that your people might know you, and that they might make your name known. We give thanks for the gospel committed to your church for the whole world for the continuing presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, for the ministry of word, sacrament and prayer, particularly those who have ministered to us for years and years, for the mission you have called us all to share. We give you thanks for the call to unity and its fruit in common action, for the faithful witness of those who follow our Lord and for all works of Christian compassion. We thank you for every service which proclaims your love to a broken world. We do pray for your church, universal across the world and local here in Armidale and our region. We pray for the ministries of the church as they are changing and adapting to Uh, deal with the current crisis that is on hand, that you would be with those who are thinking creatively, those who are doing it tough. We We pray for the mission of your church. We thank you that your gospel is not unhinged by the chaos of our world. We thank you that your word goes forth and will not come back void. We pray for the renewal of the church, that this time and space would be 
a time of great growth of your people for the sake of your glory. And we do pray for each other, fellow Christians in our spheres of influence. Please strengthen us for the journey. Please enable us to bounce off each other and grow in godliness and faith together. In peace and unity, may your people offer you the unfailing sacrifice of praise that the whole world may know your rule and all nations know your salvation and your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this evening, collect. Be present, merciful Lord, and protect us through the hours of this day and night, that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will the Lord be with you? Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you have a wonderful day wonderful evening and we'll see you again soon.